All right, good afternoon, B-Sides. Uh, we welcome to Breaking Ground. This talk is Beyond the Perimeter, Uncovering the Hidden Threat of Data Exfiltration in Google Cloud Platform. This talk is given by Or Aspir. And I just have a few announcements before we begin. I'd like to thank our sponsors, especially our diamond sponsor, Adobe. <laughs> thank you. Our gold sponsor, uh, Prism Cloud, Blue Cat, and PlexTrack. It's their support along with the support of other sponsors, donors, and volunteers that make the event possible. These talks are being streamed live. Sorry, I'm trying my best. We're trying our best. <laughs> and as a courtesy to our speakers and audience, we ask that you check to make sure your cell phones are set to silent. With that, please begin. Yeah. Thank you, Greg. Okay, so hello everyone. I'm so happy to be here at B Sides and thank you for your time that you're coming here and listen and want to hear about GCP exfiltration. So my name is Or, by the way. Or means light in Hebrew, not Or in that. And this is the longest title that you will ever see in B Sides. So let's read it together. Beyond the perimeter, uncovering the hidden threat of data exfiltration in Google Cloud Platform, or in short, exfiltration in GCP. So let's start. So a little bit about myself. Uh, my name is Ora Spear. I am the head of research at Mitiga, which focusing on incident response and cloud and SaaS. Uh, I have over 10 years of expertise in cybersecurity, both as an engineer as, and as a researcher. And I'm a former salsa teacher, so uh, if you know about cool parties in Las Vegas, please let me know after the lecture. And this is Chief. It's my dog, I love him very much, and uh, you will see him uh, later on in this lecture. So, exfiltration in GCP, how it can be possible? So the first thing you need to know about exfiltration, it's all about stealing your data from your resources and from your network. And in GCP, it has to, the attacker has to have some permissions on your environment before the exfiltration. They need to compromise some identity with permission. So we, later on in this lecture, you will see how it can be possible, how it can be happening. Uh, the next thing you need to know about exfiltration in GCP, the attacker can be creative. They can do a lot of stuff which are not the normal stuff that you expect. So we will see that later on in this lecture. And the last part is that logs that Google provides you or any cloud, provi or any cloud provider provides you uh, are your best friend regarding to detection, regarding to investigation. So this is why in this lecture we will learn about the logging mechanism in GCP, which is very important. So what we're gonna, what we're gonna learn today, we start with an introduction and then we will go deep dive on GCP logging, uh, on GCP logging, specifically on cloud audit logs. Later on, I will show you how you can ingest those logs and how, and how an attacker can exfiltrate your data and how it looks at the logs. And we will finish with a summary and a quick uh, session of questions. So let's start. So how can an attacker can have initial access on your GCP environment? So the first, I gave four examples, but of course there are more. The first part that I gave example is leaked service account keys. So if you don't know, in GCP you have something called, uh, something called service accounts, which is identities that you can use for automatic operations and applications. And one of the ways to authenticate as a service account is using a key, which is like a password. So by the way, in this lecture I will compare different cloud providers, Azure, AWS, so maybe it will help to understand more. So leaked service account keys are more like programmic access keys in AWS for a user or service principal keys that are, that are leaked. And how it can be leaked, for example, if you put the keys in Git repository and the, and the attacker has access to those keys, or maybe uh, compromise machine with those keys. So this is one way. The other way is compromised user. After a successful BC attacks or compromised machine, the attacker which has permission to look at the credentials of the user can try to connect as this user. The third part is rogue employee with what we called insider risk. There could be a legit employee which wants to do bad things to the company for a couple of reasons. So this is another scenario the attacker can have permissions on your, on your environment. And the last part that I gave here, the compromised machine, the, there could be a possibility that you run some program on your machine and it got compromised by one day, zero day, anything, and then 
the attacker can run from this machine and use the, uh, the, the machine credentials. So I gave you a couple of ways the attacker can have permissions. And let's talk about GCP logging, which is very important for this case. So here I gave four examples of logs that GCP provides you and can help you in, in case of investigation. The first part is VPC flow logs, more like the VPC flow logs in AWS, give you metadata about connection that happened in your environment. Cloud audit logs give you information about actions that was used using the API that GCP provides you. Load balancer logs, metadata about HTTP and HTTPS connections. And the last part, storage usage logs, are more like access logs in S3 and AWS, which gives information about things that happen inside your buckets. But today we will focus on cloud audit logs, which I believe it's the most important one for uh, detection. So cloud audit logs, what is it? It gives you information about administrative activities and access inside your resources. It answers questions like who did what on, and on which, which resource. And this law can be split up to different categories, which are admin activity, data access, system event, and policy denied. By the way, after this part, you have a quiz, so be focused. So admin activity audit logs. Admin activity audit logs include what we call admin write operations, such as creating resources, deleting resources, modification of those resources, more like the activity logs in subscription in Azure. So those logs are very important. They are, de they are enabled by default. And you need the permission of logging viewer in order to see them. Examples of such actions that are recorded in admin activity are in Compute Engine you have creating new instances, update instance tags, removing instances. In BigQuery, creating data sets, removing tables, cloud storage, creating new buckets, changing existing object ACLs, and in cloud SQL, creating new instance, style DB replications, and more. So this is about admin activity. The other category is data access audit logs, which captures uh, actions which a uh, person read the metadata of your resources and did uh, data actions on your resource inside those resources, like written data and reading data from your resources. Those logs are not generated by default. You need, ex you need to explicitly enable them for each service, and they have some cost penalty. They are not free. Uh, they, they, by the way, they're enabled for specifically for BigQuery. And, and another thing about it, that if your resources are publicly available, you won't get any data access logs from those resources. We will see how it affects us later on. So how you can enable those uh, data access audit logs on your GCP projects? So this is a, an example of a page in console which you can enable those logs for each service. As you see, you have three categories. The admin read, which is actually reading the metadata of the configuration, the data read, and the data write. So examples of such actions that get recorded under data access in Compute Engine, by the way, Compute Engine doesn't have data, data read, data write, only reading metadata. So Listing instances, listing disks, getting permissions, BigQuery, reading tables, appending data to tables, writing, writing data. In cloud storage, listing buckets, reading objects, creating objects. And in cloud SQL, cloud SQL, creating DB instance, listing databases, and even exporting data outside. The last one that we're going to talk about, which is Im are important but less, are system event audit logs, which are generated by Google themselves. If, for example, you want Google to delete some bucket after it expired or, or any resource, Google do, do it for you, and those logs are recorded by, by in the system event audit logs. They, too, enabled by default. Such examples of automatic instance restarts, table deletion after expired, and automated, uh, automation of instance backups. By the way, in cloud storage, you don't have those logs. And the last one is policy denied audit logs, which enabled only for VPC endpoints in GCP, and record access denials due to security policy violations. So now we come with the quiz. So now I want to know if you know, if you really understand, I will give you an action, and you need to know, and you need to answer if it's an admin activity or data access log. So the first one, copying objects in buckets. What do you think it is? It's an admin activity or data access? Data access. Cool. So you are right. This is data access. Next one. Setting labels on compute instances. Setting labels. What do you think? Data? 
Admin. It's admin. You are right. Next one. Execute SQL query on Cloud Spanner. Cloud Spanner is another service in GCP. What do you say? Data access. And the last one. Reading blobs from storage accounts. Data or admin? Data? Going once, going twice? No. This is Azure Logs. Fail. All right, so I just wanted to see if you really got it. So, okay, how you can ingest those logs? So you have a couple of ways. One of the ways is using the console. You can using much what we call Logs Explorer to do queries. The other thing is G Cloud CLI or the API itself. Here you have uh, the API, the API, and the log format. How the log looks like. This is an example of a log. I removed all the things that are dynamic and focused on specific stuff, such as. Log name and time step. In log name, you can see from where the log came from. In this specific case, this is data access. And it comes from the scope of project one. By the way, GCP, you have organization, you have folders, you have projects. So this comes from project one. And it happened uh, in this time. The time step says when the action happened. Identity. In here, you can see who did the action. So in this case, this is a service account. I know that because this is the format of the service account, the domain. The name is Mitiga. And the IP and the user agent that were used in this action. Authorization info, which is a very critical area that people miss, is the permissions that were used in this action. So in this specific case, the permissions that were used are the get IAM policy of snapshots on the snapshot of snap1. And the last part are the service name, method name, and the resource name, from which service it came from, what is the resource, and the actual method. So this is the whole event, but of course, there are more elements that are important. But those are the basic ones. So now we go, we are studying the good part. I will give you now examples of exfiltrations in three, in three popular services, cloud storage, BigQuery, and cloud SQL. And I'm trying to show you different ways uh, it can be possible. So we will start with cloud storage. Cloud storage, if you don't know, it's like S S3 in AWS or, or storage account in Azure. Uh, resources that you need to take care of are buckets, objects, and objects can be, can be uh, exfiltrated. So let's start with the basic form of exfiltration. Let's say an attacker has permissions specifically objects get, and they are downloading objects from your Google buckets. So what you can see in the event itself, which is, which is uh, very informative. So the first part is the request. In the request, you can see which object was uh, downloaded. And in the response, you can see metadata about the object itself. But what is the problem about looking at those logs and understand if something is malicious or not? So the first part is visibility problem. If the bucket or the object is public, everybody can see this object and download it, you, cannot, you won't have any data access logs, as I said earlier. So you can't see if somebody is really downloaded the, the object from your, uh, from your bucket. In order to maneuver it, you can use another log, which we said earlier, st storage usage logs. But yet again, this is not like a wonderful log that gives you all the information. It will just show you that somebody downloaded the object and from which IP. And the last thing about this, this, ish, this problem of detecting something malicious in the get object is granularity. Let's jump for a second for AD, in AWS. In AWS, when you're downloading the object, you have get object. When you want to see the metadata of the object, you have get object metadata. But in GCP, you have only get object. So it's very difficult to differentiate between those actions. So for example, if you want to do some anomaly uh, detection, you want to you see 100 downloaded, uh, uh, down, downloads for a specific uh, bucket, you cannot really show if somebody read the metadata or the, or the data itself. But we found a way. You can see under the authorization info which permissions were used. For sp uh, so, so in downloading file, you will see objects gets, only objects gets. But in get object metadata, you will see also the permission of get IAM policy. And why this is like that? It's because when you read the metadata, you also read about the permissions 
uh, somebody has on those uh, on those on those on this specific object. So this is a way, cool way to differentiate between those actions. So now I show I showed you the simple part of how you can exfiltrate exfiltrate data from your bucket. B so before we move on, could I ask a question? Yeah. Hi. Uh, um, uh, have you ever heard of Wayne Gorbea? Uh, I have a small request. Can we finish? Can we uh, add it to the end of the lecture, please? Oh well, actually, in this case, no, because uh, I think you made a, an out, uh, outrageous speaker request when you filed your uh, your uh, request to speak here. Okay. Uh, and you said that you wanted uh, some of the salsa music that you you like to write code to. All right. Okay. Is that you? Is this? Is am I in the right spot? Maybe so. I don't know. Okay. So what I and I was wondering if you've ever heard of Wayne Gorea. Is uh, salsa picante? Is uh, no? Uh, are maybe. You, are I don't you a salsa the, fan? Uh, the energy here, like I'm very high, so I'm not sure what I'm. What, what is happening right now? <laughs> <laughs> okay. During the during the, the the call for papers, when you submit a talk, okay. there's a, a field at the end that says any other outrageous requests. Okay. And you put down salsa music that I like to code to. All right. Okay. Was so that you to put yeah. some salsa? So I have here for you a CD of Wayne Gorbea with uh, Salsa ah, Picante. This is a gift for me. This is a gift for you, yes. Thank you very much. Right. Wow. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Oh, wow. This is, this, is, this is new. OK. Thank you very much. OK, so. Welcome to B-Sides. Thank you, B-Sides. So now let's come back to the interesting part of GCP and not Salsa, okay, I put it uh, on the side. Okay, so where we, where we, where, where we now, where we, are, where, where, where we are focusing on? So we looked at store, uh, on downloading objects, which is very, the easy part, the, the most direct way to exfiltrate data. And now I'll show you a different way an attacker can use a service in order to do the exfiltration for, for, him, for them. So welcome to Storage Transfer Service, which is a service that GCP provides you for transferring data from uh, other cloud providers to your GCP uh, uh, bucket and from other GCP buckets. So this service is very easy to use. And another thing about it is that this service uses their own identity, which, this, which is another service account uh, in your project. This is, this is the format of the service account, project, project number, and storage transfer service. So how can attacker can abuse it? So the first part, the attacker needs to, to bring, to add information on the source bucket to the specific service account to read objects from the, from the bucket. And then they need to, have, to give permission to write on the target bucket and create, uh, and create a task of the, the job transfer. So what happened, for example, if the bucket exists in a different organization? So let's see. So the log that we will see here is the adding permissions on the source bucket, as you can see, I focus on the specific part, which you have adding permissions to the specific service account of reading permission on the bucket. And those are the logs of the actual transfer. You see the get object from the, the victim's bucket. But that's it. OK, somebody created a job, and you see the permission added to the source bucket and the getting the object from the source bucket. But that's it, nothing else. So what is actually missing here? So the first part is you don't see the adding permission of the right permission on the targeted bucket. Why? Because you will only see logs that comes from resources inside your organization or project, but this bucket is existing in a different organization. So you won't see the right operations. The second thing you won't see is the actual right, of course, for the same reason. You won't see the right on the targeted uh, bucket. And the last part, which I think this is the worst case, by default, you won't see any creation of the transfer job. So you cannot see who created the job and to where the data will go to. So this is bad, of course. I get bad. And how you can still detect it and maybe look at it as something suspicious. For the first part, when, the first, when you first time create the service, when you enable this service in the project, you will see the creation of this service account. And so you can assume that in the future you will see some work there. The second part is the set time permissions on the victim's bucket. If you see somebody gives permission to the service account to read from the project, from, to read from the bucket, you can assume that they're going to be a transfer job and probably this identity is going to create those jobs. 
And the, of course, seeing the storage object get, if you see a lot of get from the service account, you can assume that there is jobs go going on. And the last part, if you want, you can not only look at the logs, you can just listing your resources inside your, your organization. If you see those jobs when you're using those API on the right, the gcloud transfer job list and describe, you can see actually who created the job and what, where is the destination. So in this case, in this case, here's how, how it looks in, uh, in the console. So in this case, the attacker abused another service to do the hard job for him. So if you don't know that this service account can be abused, you probably can't, can miss those exfiltration. So we finished with cloud storage. I gave you a simple way to exfiltrate using do direct, direct download and abusing storage transfer service. And now we will go to BigQuery. So BigQuery, another popular service in GCP, which used by BIs, uh, BI anal uh, analysis, uh, ana analytics, and more. And resources that you need to take care of are data sets, which is a logical container for tables and views. So how it may look when you query the data from your, dat from your uh, BigQuery uh, tables, when the identity exists in the same project and in the same organization. So here's an example of, the, of such query. You can see someone is myself querying the table of users inside company data set, data set. And then I'm searching for usernames that are not this specific user, the external user. By the way, those passwords are not real, so you can, you can take pictures, but nothing will happen. So in the log itself, when the identity runs from the, from the same organization or the same folder, you can see on the right, and it's a small part, but I'm sorry, you can see here the actual query of of what actually happened. But what happened if the identity runs from a different organization? So as you know or not, you can run from a different context of a project. So if the identity has permission to read data from a specific table and runs from, the context runs from a different organization, the logs may, seems, may seem different. So here is the full log of, uh, of reading the, 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 the tables. And as you can see, there are no metadata section. So if you don't have the metadata section, you cannot see the actual query. So you can assume that the whole table was compromised. So how it can look suspicious or maybe uh, malicious? So in cases, you see a log of get data from the table, and there isn't any metadata section, probably somebody from other organization queried your tables, which may itself be suspicious. And the last part is look at the, the, the identity itself. If, for example, it, a service account which exists in a different project or a, a user from a different domain that you are not, not know about did some query, this is suspicious by itself. So look it up, see if you have those uh, logs in your system or those identities and service accounts. So this is about BigQuery. It was, it was a quick one. And let's finish with Cloud SQL. So I showed in the beginning a qu direct query, a cross query for different organization, abusing a different service. But now we will use a different API. So before we will start with it, just a quick introduction to Cloud SQL. This is the RDS, like in AWS. This is the managed RDBMS for MySQL, Postgres, and SQL Server. And the resources that are very important regarding to data our cloud SQL instance, database, and read, read replicas. So here is export SQL dump file feature. You can, if you, if you like, you can export data from your uh, instances to buckets. By the way, this is the same for, S, uh, for AWS. You have this feature in AWS also. And about it, the first part that you need to know that this is an API that you use. You're not using a different service account, a different service that, like in transfer service. You're using your own permissions and you're using this API. And another case is that the, the dump file will not be uh, encrypted by default. So if I compare it to RDS, in RDS you have this feature. You can export data to buckets, but you have to use KMS keys. So in here, in this case, you don't have to. So if the attacker or anyone has permission to read from the bucket, they can just read your databases. So how can attacker can abuse it? A sa same case, the attacker can just run export 
on your, uh, on your instances, and the bucket itself can be inside the organization or maybe outside of the organization. The only things that the attacker needs are reading, uh, writing permissions on the buckets and, of course, doing the expo data. And, of course, they need to, know, to, they need, they need to have the ability to read from the bucket in order to do the exfiltration. But why the attacker, can, why the attacker needs to use it and not just query directly the, the, the instance? Why? Because think about it. Sometimes you have some network, network gap. You need to have network access to your instances in order to do the query. Sometimes you need to know the identity inside those instances in order to do the query itself. But now you just need to have the ability to expo data, which is kind of like DevOps IT operation. So how you can detect it as something that may be suspicious or malicious, look at the body of the export. In the body, you can see the full URI of the object that will be created in the destination bucket. You can see here the shaft test one destination. Here is shaft, by the way. And this is the name of the bucket. And you can see the actual object. So in case the bucket exists in your organization, you can look for other actions that happen to, those, to this bucket or this object later on, such as changing object ACL, changing bucket objects permission, and even get data. If you see those actions, you can assume the attacker is doing the exfiltration. But if, in case, the bucket exists in a different organization, you won't see those actions. So if you see only the export and the bucket isn't exist in your uh, list of buckets inside your organization, this is suspicious. You need to take care of it, and you don't have any logs after it to see what happened to the, to the object. So, to conclude all the uh, examples of exfiltration, we see, we've seen here simple object get, we've seen here abusing a different service that they have, they have their own permissions, we see cross-organization query, and we see an, an, an abuse of an, a different API which is not directly querying the data, which is the export of the SQL dump. So, to summer, to summer everything, the first part, please People, please, don't depend solely on the default logs that GCP provides you. You have a cool way to route those logs to a different destination such as, uh, such as BigQuery or a SIM or, uh, or a bucket. So please route them and save them in some place which, you will, be, which will have longer retention and you can really understand what happened. And of course, you need to enable those data sets, uh, data access logs. So when you come back home or to your office, check your conf login configuration, see if everything is enabled as it should be for your side. The second thing is that depending on the logs is not enough. As you've seen here, I did some listing and describing of resources inside your organization to check, for example, if a bucket exists in a different organization or to see the job that wasn't existing in the logs. So have a good way to listing, those, uh, to listing your inventory, maybe using an uh, open source or commercial solution. Third part is that really learn what the logs provides you. Sometimes you have visibility gaps, sometimes things seem weird, and really understand what, what the logs may look like. You have a lot of uh, like TTPs and, fill, and queries you, you can look over the web and in our site too and you can use them in order to see how malicious actions can look like in your GCP. And the last part, don't assume the attacker will use the, simples, the simple way to exfiltrate data. Sometimes the attacker can be creative and can do uh, more actions that will do the exfiltration for them, uh, and you won't see it if you don't know about it. So I want to say thank you very much. It was a pleasure to be here, really. Thank you for your time. So, of course, we, we have time for questions, but if you have later on question, you can uh, just connect uh, uh, with me using the LinkedIn. This is a legit barcode. It's not a malicious one, and over the email. And give a big claps for Chief that helped us in this lecture. Thank you very much, Chief. And, uh, of course, if you have any questions, I'm here. Okay, this is good, too. So thank you very much. My name is Oas Spear, and I hope to see you later on on, on this conference. Ah, yeah, yeah, well, there is a question, yeah. <laughs> 
So uh, most of the, the, the defaults are not secure by default uh, through GCP and the GCP logging. Um, are there any resources you'd recommend in order to harden and best prepare an organization for an incident to detect it? And also, we'll just also say to prevent. So the detection and the prevention is two separate questions. Uh, so it's a cool question, important one. So in order to detect, you have to have those logs. You need to check when you come back home or to, to, to the office, look at the configuration of the organization of those data access logs, see if you have some kind of uh, uh, GCP sync that routes the logs for you to a, to a place which then you can add detection to it. Regarding to prevention, so in, you have something that's called policies, uh, security policies in organization, you can automatically disable stuff such as not allowing any public uh, buckets, for example. So you can use those policies in order to do prevention. Um, and of course, how in your configuration, use some CSPM solution. And of course, you can use our blogs. We, all, we always uh, uh, publish stuff that we find, and we want to help the community to really understand how attackers can abuse the systems, not only in GCP. Yeah. Thank you very much, guys. And, and <laughs>